Hey everybody, how's it going? Marcos Villegas for Fight Up TV, powered by Stagefront VIP, being joined with Antonio Tarver, the Magic Man, here for the Spence versus Crawford Fight Week. Hey, it's, it's good to see you, always. Uh, as always, man. Uh, did you watch the press conference? I did. I was right there. What'd you make of it? A lot of tension. A lot of tension, man. Uh, it was so thick you could cut it with a knife in there. Mm. Both camps are ready. Both camps are invested. Both fighters are at their peak. I mean, I, I can uh, I can see something great happening Saturday night. Mm. Something great gonna happen anyway for the winner. Mm. I mean, they could possibly be pound for pound, the face of boxing, and probably the pay-per-view king, mm. depending on how well this fight sells. Does anything that happened today change any dynamic of the fight on Saturday night? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. But what came to my attention that I've really been overlooking, and I think going to play a pivotal part in the outcome of this fight is a seven-month layoff for Crawford, but the 18-month layoff for Spence. I think people are really overlooking that. If he needs two or three rounds to fill out, it, it, it couldn't need two or three rounds for the fill out. What if this not a fill out round? What if this thing get going right away? And now you got to be reacting. You got to be reacting. That 18 month layoff might slow him up a little bit. It might hinder him of getting in his, what we would call the zone. It takes a while. You got to let the fight come to you. If that 18 month layoff has Arrow struggling a little bit early, he might put himself behind an eight ball that he can't get from behind. That's kind of a crazy dynamic because it takes a while for Crawford to get going as well. So I hope it's not like the first four rounds they're not doing much because they're like kind of like tentative trying to see like who makes the first mistake or the first move. Now see when there's not a lot going on, that's when a boxing fan has to be more, you know, he got to be more on tune in because yeah. yeah. you watching it develop. They're not just in there for nothing. Even the things they're doing, it's a reason for that. They're setting something up, you know. First two rounds, you want to feel the guy's speed, gauge his speed, gauge his power. How you going to gauge his power? You got to feel that on your arms. You can't let it get to your chin. You got to feel it on your arms, and you know the punch that you know you can't get hit with. So then you just, from there, you just let the fight come to you. But you fight with your heart, you fight with your mind. You know, everybody thinks that Bud Crawford has the better IQ when it comes to boxing. Because we haven't seen Errol do a lot of things other than what he's done better than anybody in boxing is apply that pressure. But what if that pressure don't get it done? What's the next game plan? You got to be able to go in your wheelhouse. If the pressure don't work, you got to box. If the boxing don't work, you got to start being a counter puncher. See, it's three facets to the game. You might have to do a little bit of all of that in each, every round, each and every round. But you got to keep trying until you pick the lock. See, a lot of guys, if that first plan goes awry, they throw the whole blueprint away. They, if that first game plan don't succeed, there's not a backup plan. One thing about styles in boxing, I never wanted a style. I wanted to be able to do everything I needed to do in the ring. If you go back and look at my fights, I did what I had to do to win. I didn't know what style I was going to use. I knew I was going to come out southpaw. I knew I was going to try to get that jab established. Now everything else is a reaction. I might have to turn right-handed. I might have to be the aggressor. Look at how I fought Glenn Johnson. Totally different. Look how I had to fight Eric Harding. Look at how I had to box Montel Griffin. Look how I had first fight with Roy. So based skill on that. For skill. Yeah. First fight with Roy. Second fight, totally different. Yeah. It wasn't no skill. I wasn't trying to talk about no skill. I was trying to knock somebody ass out. And because I had to, Marco, because you know they robbed me the first time. One thing I hate is a liar and a, and a, and a thief. They, my grandma always told me that. If you lie, you'll steal. You feel me? <laughs> They robbed me, bruh. So I felt like I had to take something out of the judge's hand. That was the only way I can what? Secure victory. Only way you can secure victory is by knockout. 
you go to the judges, ain't no telling what you're going to get. So then based on that then, based on we don't want to see no funky, weird decision at the end of the night where we think one person really wanted to give it to the other guy. Who's more likely, in your opinion, given what they've shown, to get a knockout in this fight? Crawford. Why? You, he's the, one of the best counter punchers in the business. He gonna set traps. You know, he's trying to hit you with a punch you don't see. You know, he's deceptive. He's more deceptive than Errol Spence. Errol Spence, he ain't no deception in what he doing. You know what he coming to do. It ain't no secret to that. He gonna put that pressure on, he gonna stand right in front of you, he gonna bang you out. What if that don't work? See, if that don't work, I'm not saying that Earl Spence can't do anything else. We just haven't seen him do anything else, implement another game plan other than the pressure. But you think, it, I don't think the pressure going to break Crawford. Pressure has never broke me. Sometimes pressure be the easiest fighter to, fight, to face. The easiest fighters to f knock out, the ones that are coming to you. So... Errol Spence may need another game plan if that one don't work. But I haven't heard him speak of another game plan. All I heard is he going to break him. He going to break him. My, my big question is, is going to be the power and how that power affects what Crawford does. In your honest assessment from what you've seen, how do you think it will make itself apparent in this fight, if it does at all, in your opinion? I think Spence has a way of uh, hitting – uh, they say he's the power punch in this fight because he's not he's punching he's going straight at these guys most of them are, are, are covering up most of them are you know they're covered he's banging them out Crawford set his counter punch up by the guy motion he's causing a collision you feel me like the one last guy he knocked out counter hook he's causing a collision with a punch the guy don't see it's taking him like that, 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 that whip snap, like that whiplash type of shot. And, and um, Arrow's more blunt force. Boom, boom, boom. Terrence is more whip, like you don't see it. Uppercut, you know, these are hard shots that causes the knockout because your body is coming this way and his punch is coming that way. He's causing the collision. That's what a counter puncher is. So I think. Bud Crawford with a one single punch and Errol Spence with accumulation of punches. Pressure, you know. But I personally don't see Crawford standing still long enough for Errol to put that kind of pressure on you. Where you he might get like a little macho and be like, nah, like. When he want to, when he, wants to yeah. he can pick and choose to sit in there. Yeah. But when he don't want to sit, he can move. Yeah. He has options. He has options. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen Arrow fighting backwards, front foot, back foot, changing, breaking. I, could, I would have loved to have seen all of that. I just haven't seen it. Don't mean he can't do it, Marco. Will, will Crawford force him to do something else? Do something different? Fight a whole another game plan that we've never seen? Possibly, because great fighters bring that out of you. So I think what we're going to really see, nobody knows. Nobody knows. I like Crawford because I've always liked Crawford. I personally thought I saw a lot of him and my, a lot of myself in him, you know, when I was growing up, you know, being that underdog. So um, I don't, I'm like this. I'm not the type of guy that's going to switch out. Yeah. I've been a Dallas Cowboy fan since I can remember. You feel me? I ain't switched out yet. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. So uh, when I love something, I love it passionately. Yeah. And I, as a fighter, I love Bud Crawford, man. Then, uh, based on what you're saying, how does a how does a knockout look like? Do, like, have you already seen it in your mind? Like, oh, you know what? He's gonna catch him with this. Like, I can just see it. Like, it's just it's just there. Like, do you see a scenario like that? I mean, Crawford is a great counter puncher, yeah. so I think he's gonna have to make. But you see him like it's, no, it's gonna be the uppercut no, or it's gonna be the hook or make him miss, yeah. make him pay. Yeah. So it's not one shot that you feel. He's going to have to make him miss and make him pay. Clean shot. It's going to be a clean shot. You feel me? So, uh, and then we, we, I think the jury is out on either one of these guys. Chin, 
you know, we've seen both of these guys get hurt with one shot. So which one does, which one really has a durable chin? How many times can you tap it without that thing giving out? You feel me? Without it cracking, right? So, I mean, but I know both of these guys got hard. Both of these guys are tough. They both had to escape death to meet Saturday night. Bud got shot in the head. And we know what happened to Earl Spence. These guys eluded death to be here tonight for this big super fight, bro. Saturday night. So I think this is something great. This was meant to be. This was meant to be, man. I think I think the heavens and everything working on this one, bro. Yeah. <laughs> they opened up to make this they fight happen. Up to make this fight happen, bro. Hey, Toad. Great always seeing you as always, man. man. Appreciate it. Tino Tarver and Marcos Vegas, Fight Up TV. Fight Hub TV, man. <laughs> there you go.